Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Monday, October 3rd, 2016, and here are some of today's trends in the news. Well, over there in Asia, it's a holiday in China, so uh, Shanghai didn't go so high, and Hang Seng went a little up, but hey, everything was kind of quiet. Nikkei moved up a bit. And over there in Europe, holiday in Germany, so not a lot of action. Here in the States, Dow down, but things not, not moving too much. Oil's up a little bit, and gold, eh. So, why is oil up? It's why, because of what I've been saying. They're going to keep talking it up. U.S. oil settles up 57 cents, so 1.2% as Iran calls for non-OPEC action. Iran's president told his Venezuelan counterpart in a telephone conversation that it was essential for oil-producing countries to take a decision to raise the price of oil and stabilize the market. And they're saying there's a commitment from Russia. Again, they cut back about 700,000 barrels, according to this deal, which is not going to go into effect until November. That's two months away. And there's about 2 million barrels excess each day. But they're going to keep talking up the markets. That's all they ever do. As for the stock market, stocks close lower after U.S. economic data. Real estate lags. Yep. So what happened here? In economic news, September market manufacturing PMI came in at a three-month low. And again, car sales are down a bit. Nothing really going on too much. Quote, I think the market is still looking for inspiration. None of the news we've gotten have been terribly encouraging, said Bruce McCain, chief investment strategist at Key Private Bank. Some sort of corrective action, given the high valuations, wouldn't be surprising and would be healthy for the markets. What, just because they're way overvalued, you know, and there's real no growth in earnings for, what, five quarters? That any reason? Too big to fail, but is bailout on the table because the big news is Deutsche Bank. And as we said last week, it looked like they came to a deal where the government of the United States wouldn't hit Deutsche Bank as hard as they said they would with the fine. So Deutsche Bank stock went up. But here's this is interesting. Deutsche Bank is staring at a multi-billion dollar fine from the Justice Department. You ready for this? For its enthusiastic participation in Wall Street's festival of stock of toxic mortgage products in the years leading up to the financial crisis in 2010. Enthusiastic participation in Wall Street's festival of toxic mortgage products. Isn't that nice language? Enthusiastic participation, criminal activities, hey, You don't get fined $14 billion because you just did an enthusiastic participation. And they all did it. But you know what it is. It's a neo-feudal society. The economic elite and the global political nobility get a free ride. And of course, they're talking about whether Europe can muster the will to mount a rescue in the event of an emergency. And of course, they're talking about the emergency. Eh, Maybe not going to happen, but they'll always bail out their buddies and we the people always pay for it. Talking, going back to what's going on in the markets. U.S. auto sales slip in September. Over here, you look, keep looking at the the data, I've been reading this, residential market cools, slow down in the Manhattan apartment market, deepened during the third quarter. 
The number of sales fell by over 15% from the same quarter. This is the lowest for a third quarter since 2011. Bank of Japan's Tankin survey shows no improvement in big manufacturers' sentiment. ING, we just talked about Deutsche Bank. What did I talk about last week? Commerce Bank shutting down 20% of their sales force. ING Bank to cut 7,000 jobs in cost-saving drive. Isn't that nice language? They're losing money, and they can't make any. Follow the money. When the banks are in trouble, man, it's not so good. Hey, you know that uh, group out there that the Americans love so much, the Brookings Institution? Guess what? I think they're stealing from the Trends Journal and the Trends Research Institute. Global growth sliding in to the morass. Yeah. What's our top trend for 2016 that we've been talking about? A global economic recession. But hey, when the white shoe boys say it, then it makes the headlines. The global economy is faltering again with growth rates, quote, sliding back into the morass, according to the Brookings Institution. The annual meeting will encourage policymakers, again, send your child to school to become a policymaker. They could fail at everything they do, get paid a lot, and they'll even be able to pay off that debt. To pursue inclusive and faster global growth, as international organizations, finance ministers, central bank governors seek to reassure the public they can cooperate and they have the necessary tools to break five years of economic disappointments. How can they get away with this crap? Five years of failure. And these clowns write this story like the other clowns know what they're doing. But they get away with it and they keep doing it. Christine Lagarde, the fund's managing director of the IMF, won last week of weak and fragile economy and was encouraging econo that was encouraging economic malpractice in the form of, this is the malpractice, not stealing the dough, not the Deutsche Banks, not the Wells Fargo, not the Goldman Sachs gang, not all of those banks that were committed felonies, not those banks. No, that's not what she's talking about. The economic malpractice in the form of, are you ready? Restrict, restricting trade and reducing openness in the global economy. Yep. Anything that stops the multinationals and steals your jobs and puts you in a place in Slavelandia, well, we could call that Economic malpractice. Every one of these people are practicing economic malpractice. Or is it just a misdeed? Again, looking at the trends. Story in uh, the New York Times on Saturday. Again, the least read paper. It's time to eat. Let's stay home. Like it's a big deal to stay home and eat. Sales at some of the country's biggest restaurant chains, McDonald's, Wendy's, Buffalo Wild Wings, to name a few, are slumping. And all the ones that I've been reading continually. There is a restaurant recession. They make it such a big deal that people are learning how to cook for themselves. When I was a kid, we never went out. I think I went to a Chinese restaurant like twice a year. When you go out, you can never eat as good as you were eating at home. But you read this thing, and they're all buying these prepared foods. And again, talking about all the healthy foods that people are eating, and because groceries are cheaper. A small minority of the public is eating better. By their weight, you shall know them, and obesity levels are pew, through the roof. And because prices are a little cheaper, 
at grocery stores, that's stopping people from going out, you know what this is. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Boy, you read this thing. You know, it's, it's just a joke. Miss Shannon, 28, began cooking at home with deliveries from Blue Apron, a meal kit service. Why, you can't do it on your own? You need a Blue Apron? Anyway. On to some other economic news on a global scale. Threat of unrest hangs over Macri's reform agenda in Argentina. I'm mentioning this because every time a guy gets in there that plays the high business game and gives the business people all the breaks, he's going to be the savior. But that's not the way it's going, and you know I've been reporting on this. Almost 10 months since taking power, social unrest is one of the biggest threats facing the center-right Mr. Macri. Argentinians complain their income is being swallowed up by hefty tariff rises, higher taxes, and inflation expected to reach about 40% this year. 40%. Brilliant. And on to some economic, into uh, some uh, global news. They rejected that peace deal in Colombia. Too bad. With the um, FARC. So, um, 50.24, no. 49.7, yes. And guess what? Hey, you folks out there in Michigan... Can't drink your water? Hey, we have water filthy all over the country? Don't worry about it. We got money to waste. Pentagon spent over $500 million making fake Al-Qaeda videos. Yeah, I wonder how many fake beheadings they did. Our money going to a foreign country to perpetrate fraud. I tell you, Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al-Qaeda. Taliban fighters penetrate heart of Afghan city, Wall Street Journal. 16 years of losing wars by losers who steal our money, give it to their friends to spread more hate and destruction. It's a losing war. When are they going to get it? They're not going to get it as long as the people in power keep getting paid off by the military-industrial complex so they get enough dough to run for re-election. In grown-up language, they call it bribes and payoffs. In America, they call it campaign contributions. In morality, they call it sellouts. And things are heating up over there in Ethiopia. Oromia, O-R-O-M-I-A, stampede at Ethiopia protests, leave 52 dead, much higher than that. I'm mentioning this because this doesn't make the news, what's going on in the Congo, what's going on in Ethiopia, what's going on in Sudan, it'll just pop in, but yet every day they'll put something about Aleppo and that guy uh, Johnson over there running for the libertarian, on a libertarian ticket, didn't even know what an Aleppo was. Maybe he thought it was a wart. So here you go. I'm mentioning this because there used to be a country called Libya that was the most solid place in Africa. And the guy that ran the place, his name was Muammar Gaddafi. And he made a deal with Italy and the rest of Europe where migrants and refugees fleeing, fleeing from Africa would not be going through Libya. He warned NATO and his coalition of the killing that they would be sorry for what they were doing in destroying Libya. Now they're pouring out of Ethiopia and Eritrea. They're pouring out of Congo and Sudan. They're pouring out of Syria as America and its coalition of the killing keep bombs away, Afghanistan, Iraq, I wonder how they got the refugee crisis. Can't figure out the migrant crisis. Yes, you can. Because you know why? The headline in today's Financial Times, global growth sliding into more ass. Sluggishness continues to haunt 
advanced economies which have settled into a pattern of positive but weak growth in recent years. As China is buying up the world and the business of China is business, the business of the West is war, led by the war hawks in America. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.